welcome back. Uh, welcome to the second part in what is proving to be a three-part video series uh, in which I look up physics papers about how mocha pot machines brew uh, and I explain the results to you in videos. Uh, so if you haven't seen the first video in the series, I recommend ch checking that out. Uh, that was where I addressed the Concetto Giannino paper. And where we left off was uh, Concetto Giannino had used Darcy's Law, a physical model, to explain the flow of a fluid under pressure through a porous medium, this being the coffee grinds. I uh, made a couple measurements, uh, conclusions about how much pressure it took to brew, uh, and was able to calculate what the permeability it was of the coffee, which is how easily the coffee grinds permitted water to flow through. So today's video talks about a 2008 paper that came after that from Dr. Warren King. Uh, he's based in Australia, and it brought a lot of very interesting contributions to it, uh, and it's going to help to dispel uh, the two main myths of mocha pot brewing. Uh, one is that the water must boil in order to brew, and the second is that you want to put cold water in the base in order to get the best quality coffee. I'll stick around after the video and I'll share uh, stories that Dr. King shared with me about the origin of this paper, how it came to be, and sort of surprises along the way. So, enjoy! Warren King's 2008 paper is The Physics of a Stovetop Espresso Machine. It took Giannino's approach and added one key ingredient that undermined everyone's basic assumption about how a mocha pot works and most Italians' dogma on not preheating water. To understand this addition, you'll need to understand the basic physics of vapor pressure. A liquid will always have some energetic molecules evaporating off of it and escaping into vapor. If you leave water out in an open chamber, it will evaporate. The vapor pressure of a liquid refers to the amount of partial pressure a vapor needs to apply to keep the liquid from evaporating. Very importantly, the vapor pressure depends on the temperature, as warmer water will evaporate faster and so will require more vapor pressure to be kept in liquid form. For water vapor, the vapor pressure equals one atmosphere at 100 Celsius, so any tiny increase in pressure will result in vapor bubbles appearing in the bulk and the liquid boiling from within, but it's important to bear in mind the liquid water at any temperature in an enclosed container with air will always raise the pressure by an amount equal to its own vapor pressure. Now, King too used Darcy's law for fluid flow through a porous material to model the process. But rather than assume no flow until the critical pressure followed by expansion at constant pressure, King allows that the pressure might vary through the process, and in doing so, influences the flow rate, which in turn influences the pressure, which in turn, etc. Note that this means that any amount of pressure difference will now produce at least a little bit of coffee. Far from waiting for the water to boil, You'll get flow to the upper chamber as soon as the vapor pressure pushes up enough coffee to fill the empty space in the tube. On top of this, King adds another critical piece to the model, that the pressure in the chamber is not only the vapor pressure of the heated water, but also that of the air that has been sealed with it. This has the paradoxical effect of making the pressure lower. How on earth? So if you recall your basic high school chemistry, you would know that the ideal gas law model specifies that any gas, like air, will expand as it's heated in proportion to the ratio of the temperatures from absolute zero. Your air might heat from 293 Kelvin to 373 Kelvin if you take room temperature air and bring it to boiling, so your air expands by around 27%. What you probably failed to consider is that the mocha pot bottom chamber is sealed at the bottom, so that as the water leaves the lower chamber, there's nothing to fill it in except that small amount of air you left in the top. This is why many pouring containers have inlet holes to open while you pour. When the container is sealed, you are requiring that air to expand by more than double, which can only happen if the air pressure is decreasing to less than half of what it was. The less the initial air in the chamber, the more dramatic the back suction effect. The less initial air you include, the longer it takes to build up the pressure for your coffee to brew. How does this affect your coffee quality? King cites a 2002 Scientific American article written by Ernesto Illy himself, which states that the ideal extraction temperature for espresso is 93 degrees Celsius, and calculates that the effect of this air back suction issue is that your coffee brews at around a volume average of 69 degrees. So more back suction is actually desired because it prevents the coffee from brewing at too low a temperature. Adding more free space makes the problem worse, and the coffee extracts at even lower temperatures, but there is a minimum amount of air you can leave in the pot without covering the fill valve. King's solution? Preheat your water, as every Italian tells you not to. How much to preheat? Too hot and your coffee will extract it too high a temperature towards the end, and too low will reproduce the problem above. King recommends preheating your water to 7 degrees Celsius for the Goldilocks solution to this problem. The remainder of the paper involves experimental measurements of things like the amount of coffee produced for different starting parameters, 
the temperature at which coffee first appears, the time at which the coffee first appears, and then comparing it to theoretical predictions with good agreement to show that his model isn't crazy. King also describes how he made measurements for the flow parameter by graphing the flow rate as a function of pressure difference, and notably, how this changes when the coffee is packed more tightly or more loosely. He also explores the idea of brewing coffee and stopping at a given temperature instead of heating until you've gotten all the coffee you're going to get. This would probably be the closest equivalent to ending the heating early. Thus, you can maintain a tighter range on extraction temperatures, but King shows it may take several minutes to get the last few drops. So what are we to conclude from all this rigorous science and hard work? One, your mocha pot doesn't generally brew by boiling water. Two, preheating the water is not only not a mistake, but will probably improve your coffee quality. And three, how tightly you pack your coffee can have substantial impact on the coffee flow rate, and so it becomes something to consider as you're tinkering around. And yet, even the sophisticated treatment made one unchecked assumption that would not be fully resolved until the 2009 Navarini paper came along. An extra thanks to Dr. Warren King for helping to fact check this video and for correspondence and sharing the backstory for the genesis of this paper. Thanks for watching. Remember to stay coffee snobby. So there you have it. Uh, that is uh, Dr. King's 2008 physics paper. Now a bit of the behind the scenes for that paper. Uh, apparently Dr. King had been arguing with his cycling buddies about whether or not a mocha pot needed to boil to, uh, to brew. And I guess he was uh, feeling like a smart guy. He's like, come on, you guys, it's so simple. I'm going to get home. I'm going to write a couple notes. I will prove you guys wrong. Uh, and then he looked into it and found out it was a, quite a bit more complicated than he had envisaged. He has a background in the physics of clouds. So he looked into it, uh, got more in depth, and then, of course, wound up doing all these experiments and everything. And so he said it took him about six months to actually get into all the details and take all the measurements and everything. Um, but the result is, you know, the paper that you see, which, like I said, is, is a, a huge contribution, I think, to understanding how uh, mocha pots work. I love that the origin of this uh, paper was a debate that this guy had with his cycling buddies. And in the end, he said they were quite dubious. Uh, they didn't quite buy it up until the moment when the paper was actually accepted and published. And they were like, okay, maybe you're right. <laughs>